So Hot Chip had given me this song that seemed like a departure for them to me as far as it being a very, you know, kind of melancholy love ballad. So I wanted to try and do something different on my end as well, as opposed to doing something, you know, hyper visual and kind of psychedelic and kinetic. I wanted to try something a little more cinematic, but something that could still be really stylized and have all those same visual elements in it. And I was inspired by this documentary called Guys and Dolls. That was this BBC documentary about the relationships that men had with their real dolls, which are these kind of just rubber, super high-end, synthetic, custom-made uh, love dolls. So I kind of use that as the nucleus of their, their, their relationship, being you know a lonely kind of outsider man with this exotic woman that's you know so out of his league that it's almost fantastical, and just kind of use that to move it to these heightened visual proportions. The woman in this, to me, represented uh, kind of like a lonely, desperate male's, you know, hyperbolic embodiment of like what the perfect female was. And when you, a woman or, you know, someone is loaded with that many expectations from someone else, I like the idea that they're like kind of volatile, like a volcano. So that's kind of what we see at the end of the video, is that he has this kind of forced, dominating relationship with this, you know, synthetic being, and that it, you know, goes bad in the end. <laughs> uh, this is, his name is Jack. His role, which you'll see in the final video, is he basically plays the male counterpart to the female character in different stages of their relationship. One being when he's in a lab kind of quote unquote creating this woman female character and then where it all kind of comes together is the female character on a fashion shoot and he plays a kind of lecherous male that has like a sinister presence in the background and when she has a freak out he has to intervene and kind of control this uh, frantic angry female. Some of the actresses that I auditioned were very uh, curious or confused by the freak out elements. You know, I told them I wanted to have a tantrum or basically throw a spastic fit. They would all, you know, give me different really weak versions of that or ask me why as opposed to just kind of jumping into it and giving me a really physical performance. But this girl, Mary Elise Hayden, had a really good look and you know, was enthusiastic about the part and had seen some of my previous work, so understood the kind of visual aesthetic I was working with. So in the video, her character is on this gurney and he's you know touching her face and kind of massaging her. And through a visual effect mixed with you know a practical effect, he kind of opens a door on her face or her face opens revealing her head to be a, a hollow cavity. This photo is a shot of that practical prosthetic, which is was a fiberglass life cast of the actress's face, and it looks, you know, pretty pretty darn great, I think. And uh, what we'll end up doing is shooting this with multiple plates of the actress's actual face turning, and then we'll do a composite. So eventually, we'll get a nice kind of cool shot of her face opening up in the video. I swore. I would not sit in a director's chair. I even told my producer, I was like, I don't want any director's chairs on sets. Like I had this like moral issue for the longest time, just, you know, kind of thought they represented like, you know, this douchey hierarchy that I really resented. And I always like looked at guys in director's chairs as kind of like douchey. And within like two minutes on set, I was like, oh, hell yeah, I'm gonna sit in this. <laughs> and it was great and it was nice. And, you know, it was cool to be able to finally embrace that role to a degree. So I no longer have hate for the director's chairs. From the deep silence of 